crack guys welcome back to the start of this reading vlog this is going to be the final week of the fangirl reading month still haven't come up with a name for that because it's not exactly a readathon uh, it's just like me just doing this by myself so that was not expected so this is the last one of these weekly reading vlogs i might keep them up or do like weekend reading vlogs i'm not 100 percent certain or again if it's just for like a particular theme as i said in last week's reading vlog still have to export that and upload it but i just got back from work today and i look like crap because i'm going to go to the gym in a little bit because i'm going on holiday next week and i kind of need to you know get moving but i just wanted to do a quick little update i know at the end of last week's reading vlog i said that i picked up little women um just before a package arrived i actually decided to set that down just temporarily because i decided to pick up station rage from deep space nine by diane carey i loved this one so i just like felt like i really wanted to read it before the month was up uh, this is my battered to frig version of it it's like apart started last night first chapter already know that i'm going to fall back in love with it but i'm gonna have to set that down because guess what kim <laughs> i'm so excited i just thought i would um open it on camera so where is the doohickey to open it please work please work please be good please be good ah balls yes oh my gosh oh my gosh oh my gosh oh my god now this is before the UK actually gets this because I ordered this on Book Depository. Oh my gosh. I cannot believe this is actually in my hand. Oh, and this is different from Born With Teeth because she hasn't titled the chapters. The book's in two parts. I think it's like part one is for, for her father and then part two is for her mother. I'm speechless already for how much I am ready to read this. Having anything with Kate Mulgrew's name on it is just everything to me. Like, I will probably get um, a paperback edition as well and probably get the UK edition when it comes out. Because it's on Waterstones, I kind of want to give Waterstones the incentive to get more Kate Mulgrew books in because, you know, fangirl priorities. I pre-ordered this one off of Book Depository so that I could get it on time with the US. So I'm very excited. <laughs> but very very apprehensive about it because i know it's about her parents and about being a carer for um a parent and i've done that and it's gonna hit me in the feels i know but the plan for today is i'm gonna go get some lunch read some more of station rage i'm gonna read this before going to the gym then go to the gym come home get sorted then read how to forget because like i need to start it i wish i could start it immediately but i'm just going to start with station rage then go into that that sounds better instead of me starting it and having to put it down whereas i can start it later and just read until bedtime does that sound like a plan i think it sounds like a plan it sounds like a plan i also need to get my video to export which i'm going to do right now I'm back from the gym I have showered as you can tell by my lovely pink towel on my head so I am going to start reading How to Forget by Kate Mulgrew I'm going to dry my hair take my contact out put my glasses on snuggle up with a blanket and start reading I've realized I get it on May 20th which is Captain Janeway's birthday so I get Kate Mulgrew's second memoir on the birthday of her character how perfect is that how fangirly perfect is that i am so excited to get started
a Ruski time. It is Tuesday. Why is that always so difficult for me to do? Like, just say the damn date. It's Tuesday, the 21st of May. And I'm about 88 pages into How to Forget by Kate Mulgrew. And this book is already destroying me. I have wanted to cry. I have just wanted to hug her. I have just wanted to just whisk her away and just protect her from everything in the world and just everything from the past. And it's just like, oh my God, woman, what are you doing to me? Like, seriously. As you might be able to tell, I have started annotating this book. It was literally a spur of the moment decision last night. I did say in my last reading vlog that I wanted to annotate the Catherine Hepburn biographies, but I didn't do that. But with this one, I felt the un flinching need and the compulsion to actually annotate it. So these were the only ones that I had in the house. So I'm just back from Belfast where I picked up these guys. Pens obviously because I need pens. Not that you know this um, thing here you can't see it because of the Captain America ears. But right behind that there is a little plant pot holder with pens and pens and like I have been using this pencil to underline stuff in the book already, but you know, I want pens to kind of correspond with some of the colors. And I got a new ruler because I had been using the bookmark and then I found out that the bookmark hadn't been cut straight. I had been using this, this little like Celtic one, but it's not straight. And I got Trey Bore Soft Mints because you can never not have Trey Bore Soft Mints. Did I have to go all the way to Belfast for those? Yes, I did because my town is shit. I specifically wanted these because they had like the clear ends and they aren't long because the ones that I have been using are like that length. Mm, that, that was probably fine at university but not when I'm like trying to annotate a book that I want to actually keep and just see quickly offhand where I put it because as you can see like just for example on a page like it comes all the way in here and that's just like a little bit sticking off the edge i just want a little bit sticking off the edge a little bit on the page so that i'm not covering up words because ocd like that because i only had the two colors here i used yellow for a few things and then pink for everything else so i'm going to go back through it and then use the colors on this i think i'm going to use green for um, words i don't understand because kate mulgrew is so articulate so articulate she knows a lot of words like in the context of the sentence i can probably figure out what it means but half the time i've actually had to look it up so i'm going to use that for words that i don't particularly understand blue i'm thinking for you know like sad moments profound moments poignant moments yellow for happier moments you know like fangirly moments moments where she's happy that kind of thing and then i'm not sure what the pink and purple will be i'll figure out as i go along so that is the update for now i still haven't figured out what audiobook i'm gonna listen to yet because the um credit isn't in yet i'm like tempted to buy another credit just so i could listen to this um when i can't physically read it but i don't think i'm ready to actually hear her voice saying all this when I first read Born with Teeth, which was her first memoir, I physically read it. It, like, broke my heart to read that. It took me, like, three years then to get the audiobook. And even then, that was, like, a punch in the feels. So, I think I might wait to get the audiobook for this one. Probably will have to wait. or Otherwise, I will be, like, a crying mess. We all don't need that. So, that's basically the update for now. So, I'm going to go move these into this and then underline what I'd already underlined in here in the color that I want. So
Okay, so it's a little bit later and so I have changed out all of the tabs that I have for these new coloured ones and I have a key at the front here. The blue ones, as I said, are for profound, sad or poignant moments. The yellow ones are for happy moments, funny moments or fangirly moments, you know, when she mentioned Star Trek or Catherine Hepburn. The pink one, I decided to go for things that I love or are lovely or are loving, things like that. I think they kind of explain themselves. The purple ones I decided to go for bits that are uncomfortable or disturbing. She has like a lot of these moments in her life that are disturbing and uncomfortable to read. If you've read Born With Teeth you will know what I'm talking about and there's even more in this. I would near say that there are trigger warnings for um, Born With Teeth and How To Forget. And then for the green, as I said, new words, you know, that I don't know, as you can probably tell, there are quite, there are already a few. But then I also went for born with teeth references where I remember things like that being mentioned in her first memoir. And then perhaps they are then expanded upon in this one. So that's my key. These are new tabs. And these are my pins. Back to reading. What's crack guys? It is Thursday. I got a faster today. Just got home from work and so I just thought I would update you guys. I got to page 151 of How to Forget by Kate Mulgrew. This is on chapter 19 which is the start of part two which is dedicated to her mother and I have been annotating. I think I'm going to annotate non-fiction books more than the fiction books because there are probably one some that you know I just don't feel like I want to annotate. I just want to just read it and enjoy it. If I find that I am enjoying it enough to annotate it, then I will. But I think I will probably just stick to annotating nonfiction books, you know, like memoirs, like the Catherine Hepburn biographies, like the Star Trek Voyager, behind the scenes book, textbook, whatever else you want to call it. I am loving this. Like she's breaking my heart and I just want to hug her. She's saying things that she thought at the time and I'm like I thought the same thing I have thought the same thing it's eerie that way that I'm like I thought I was the only one that thought that and I felt guilty for thinking that but since she's thought it I like think oh, okay so it was like a legitimate thought I'm not being selfish I'm not being cruel I'm just being human and if I can accept Kate Mulgrew for thinking that I can accept myself for having thought that I'm really invested in this and I it just makes me love her so much more and respect her so much more because if I went through half of the stuff that she talks about in How to Forget and Born with Teeth I would be in the gutter somewhere I would be dead I just know I am not physically or emotionally capable of going through all the things that she has been through in her life I I just know I would just crawl into a hole and die I would just I, I would be worse than useless. So that is that, but I also have this from Amazon. I know exactly what it is because when I started reading How to Forget, I knew that I wanted to annotate it. So I ordered a few things off of Amazon because I think these are the ones that Brittany the Bibliophile uses. So I have these. I was too impatient to wait for these to arrive today. So I went to Belfast yesterday and kind of got a head start. I love the post-its that I use. It's just these ones here that are clear tabbed in the in the center and it's so handy because once you pull this one out then this then this corresponding one flips out too so you're never gonna have to like look for it because you just like grab whatever side and it pulls out and it pulls out the next one for you so that it's ready and ready to go. Like you're, you're limited to the same colors in these but it also has orange so I'll probably use that for something else that you know I probably wouldn't expect to see as much in the memoirs and that so I can assign a different mood to it but the good thing is is these come with a ruler so if you're like annotating and you don't have a ruler like I couldn't use that as a ruler because it's like just too thick and too short whereas this is about 12 centimeters they're not exactly the ones that Brittany uses but I will be able to use them anyway for definite so for now I'm just going to read a bit more then I'm going to go to the gym for a little while watch a couple episodes of Star Trek Voyager seriously those screens on the cardio machines just give me 
life. I'm gonna keep on reading and annotating. I'm gonna have a cup of coffee, eat a little something, and I'll catch up with you guys later. <music>just to update you a little bit I've changed the key just a little bit I've taken away the purple one because whenever it's tabbed on the sides you can't really distinguish the pink and the purple as you do when it's on a bit of paper you can clearly see what is pink and what is purple but when it's on the tabs just sticking out you can't tell and it seemed really odd that you know whenever I had it as the shocking or disturbing things I couldn't tell whether it was actually like the loving things or the lovely things or the things that I just loved in general. So I decided that they're going to be kind of one and the same. One's going to mean something slightly different, but they're going to be kind of like under the under the same umbrella term. Whereas the orange ones are going to be the shocking, disturbing or uncomfortable things. And you can probably tell that there are a few in here already. So that makes it that they stick out like a sore thumb. That's why I'm going forth with it now um, and I will write in here what I want the purple one to eventually represent. That's the update on that. Here I have a visitor. Toby. Hi mister. Oh, aren't you the most precious? <laughs> so it's a little bit later. It is still Wednesday. Did I say it was Thursday earlier? You know what, I think I did. I am like so confused of the days. It is unreal. It's still Wednesday. I have been to the gym, took a shower, currently watching some Deep Space Nine. But I just wanted to update you guys quickly. I read a bit more of How to Forget and I was using these tabs. I actually like them. My camera just decided to stop filming for whatever stupid reason. It always used to do that when I had the wrong kind of memory card for it, but better not stop this time. I started using these tabs and I don't mind them because like they're not as opaque as I thought they were going to be. So I am happy enough about that, that I'm not covering up words. I'm not covering up things that I'm wanting to annotate. So I am happy enough to continue on using these. I do prefer the clear aspect of the other tabs. So I'll probably continue to use those and kind of like mix and match the other ones in. Earlier, I forgot to mention that I actually managed to convince one of my colleagues to read Born With Teeth. And this is actually the large print version that I accidentally bought about six months ago. And I just couldn't get rid of it because it's an edition of Born With Teeth. So I wasn't going to get rid of it. No, I was going to keep it. I think it was meant to happen for this kind of moment where she could then read this. She's going to read it and I'm going to be so happy because then I can finally talk to somebody about it. You know, you know, face to face so that we're not talking over a phone or text messaging or messaging of some description. I would rather actually sit down with somebody, have some coffee and discuss. So I am so excited that she's actually going to be reading Born With Teeth. I finally convinced somebody in my life to read it. I've actually also convinced a subscriber to read it, which I was completely blown away by. So I am so, so happy that they are reading it and I hope that they love it as much as I do. With that also being said, I'm also going to read it again so that I can annotate it. Hello. Hello, mister. Hello. Bye bye because I'm actually gonna annotate one of the editions that I have. I have one that was my first ever edition. I have a paperback and then I have this one. 
so i'm actually going to annotate the hardback edition because like um the dust jacket is not pristine and so i just kind of figured i can wreck that one then yes i'm going to go get another edition of the hardback so that it can be pristine so i think that's pretty much going to be all for today wednesday i think this vlog is going to actually be quite long considering so i'm just going to read a bit longer get some dinner and then read even more because i am like determined to finish this as soon as humanly humanly possible despite the fact that i'm like trying to savor it and annotate it if i didn't have to like go over the beginning annotations three times yesterday i could probably be at like page 230 or something but i'm loving it i'm just loving it and i'm hoping to go to her signing slash book talk in galway in july it'll be my first time in galway and it'll actually be my first time hopefully driving in the south which will be an experience so i'll see you guys tomorrow so it is thursday evening and i got the day right the first time round go me but i've just got a little bit of a reading update i am on page 302 of how to forget by kate mulgrew this is like hitting me right in the feels i really relate to this especially like how their illnesses are progressing i definitely recall my dad going through the same thing with ms and how he kind of deteriorated so this book has a lot of blue tabs from where it's like poignant or sad or where i can relate a lot to it because of that of the tabs the blue one was the first to go then the green followed swiftly behind it and the green one is the one where i'm marking words that i don't know the definition of they went swiftly as did the blue ones as you can tell there are at least like 20 words that i don't didn't understand I will probably finish this this evening, but I just had to take a bit of a break because it is getting to the point where it is very overwhelming and very poignant and heartfelt and, you know, you just have to take a bit of a break when reading this or else I feel like I have to take a bit of a break. So that is my update for how to forget and how my annotating is going. So I'm going to get some dinner, watch the final episode of The Big Bang Theory and find room to edit tomorrow's video which I should have done yesterday but I didn't and finish how to forget and probably cry what's up guys it is Friday today I am in holiday mode I finished work for two weeks there now I am just oh I cannot wait to be away on holiday and just to be away from work so ick so excited i will not be thinking about it at all when i am away so i thought i would update you guys on my reading i actually finished how to forget last night by kate mulgrew oh my god this book destroyed me i knew it was going to destroy me going into it because a girl that i know online had read it she had gotten arc of it somehow she loved it she did warn me that you know you might need tissues with it and a very damn well near did and these are all of my annotations and tabs blue and green are the most predominant and if you remember blue were the ones that were like sad poignant and then the green ones were like words that i didn't know the meaning of that i had never seen before and just their definitions as well throughout this book all i wanted to do was hug her I just wanted to give Kate Mulgrew the biggest hug imaginable because I felt her pain. In Born With Teeth, I could feel her pain, but this time I actually felt like I could physically feel it. I felt that I was actually there, stood beside her throughout all of this. I felt like she was saying things that I had thought or I couldn't put words to. I felt very much connected to it. I felt like we were seeing a completely different side of Kate Mulgrew like we do see you know like the Kate Mulgrew the actress we've seen her characters be vulnerable we've seen you know some of us might have seen her in a play be vulnerable but we have never seen Kate be vulnerable we've never seen this other side of her you you see it in Born With Teeth you see Kate being vulnerable in this one you see kitten being vulnerable which is the pet name that her parents gave her and you definitely see that this is a 
daughter's memoir, whereas Born With Teeth is a mother's memoir. That makes this book all the more profound and hard-hitting. It is unapologetically raw and heartbreakingly profound. There are times when like, I just I feel like I'm, I just want to get like really emotional when talking about this because it is so hard-hitting and because this is a woman that I have admired since I was 11 years old and she's opened up to us. She's opened up to her fans and to new fans and to strangers. She's opened up to all of us about her parents and about her siblings, her relationships, her family, her sons, her friends. She's opened up about all of that and exposed herself to great vulnerability. Vulnerable See, I can't even speak. She's opened herself up to to an extent where she is so vulnerable but there is such a strength in that vulnerability if that makes any sense at all I I can't believe that I read this book and it is about Kate Mulgrew who has been such a staunch part of my life like whenever I was feeling down or sad or even when my dad passed away Kate Mulgrew was always that constant. Anytime anything happened in my life where I was sad, when my grandfather passed away, when my granny passed away, like my granny passed away not that long after I kind of introduced her to Star Trek Voyager and I showed her this photo of Kate Mulgrew and she was like, oh, she's beautiful. That was one of our last bonding moments. And when my granddad passed away, you know, Voyager was there for me. When my dad passed away, Voyager was there for me. I feel like now... I want to be there for her because of this book. It's been so raw. If that makes any sense, I'm probably babbling. Probably am babbling. It's just word vomit right now. Considering how tabbed this book is, you can see how profoundly it has impacted me. And not just, you know, my vocabulary, but there are parts of this where I was, I was writing, you know, like... I felt the same way with my dad. I felt the same way with this, that, and the other. I, I could almost like see things that were similar with me and my brother. Um, you know, I'm like one, only one of two. But I could also then see where my dad might have had the same problems with his siblings because he was one of six, I think. And they had a younger brother pass away when he was very young. So I could like near see where they splintered or her family splintered. It's oh my goodness, this book hits you in the teeth, slaps you in the face, screams at you at times. And I loved it. It is so beautifully written, just like with Born With Teeth. Her vernacular is incredible. It's very warming and very enticing at the same time. You don't want to put it down. I certainly didn't want to put it down. Same with Born With Teeth. She invites you in and then you just want to stay and have a cup of coffee or a cup of tea or some or a beer. But on the back of this, Malachi McCourt, he sums it up perfectly in his blurb. Kate Mulgrew is a brilliant actor, which does not conceal her brilliance with the pen. That's her. I sincerely hope that she continues to write. I am pretty sure that she will continue to write. I heard a rumor, I don't know how long ago, that was saying that she was working on a piece of fiction. I sincerely hope so. I just need more from her. Whether it is another memoir, maybe a captain's memoir, that would be freaking awesome. Or just a bit of fiction. I will be perfectly happy. I will be a happy little fangirl and I will be like ordering it as soon as pre-order comes available. After finishing this, I definitely want to go to Galway to the Galway Arts Festival where she is doing like a talk or a signing or whatever, I definitely need to go to Galway. I, I don't care if I have to go by myself or whatever. I just need to go there and talk to her and like say something to her. Maybe I should get a kick out of like seeing how many words I don't know. Five out of five stars or definite. One of my favorite books of all time now. So moving on from the intensity of How to Forget, I'm going to pick Station Rage back up and continue reading this. 
this I only finished the first chapter oh I'm actually on chapter five I forgot about that I think this will be my last read of this fangirly month because I'm going away on holiday on Wednesday and so I have to like pre-film a couple of videos to get those out for when I'm back so I'll be cutting my reading quite short so if I get this finished before I film my May wrap up which is gonna be hella long because like this was book 11 of the month <laughs> like what and then this will potentially be book 12 which will be the most I've read in a month I should do fangirly reads more often but that is the update for right now finished how to forget I'm gonna move on to station rage my video is exporting. I didn't edit it last night like I said I was going to because I just wanted to finish How to Forget and then it was getting late and I was getting tired and I was working and six o'clock comes early. Well, other than that, I will see you guys later. Happy Sunday, everybody. I have got my makeup on. I am actually kind of half decently dressed and that's because I was filming. So I decided that I would just end my reading vlog here, you know, wrap it up push it out whatever the phrase is i can't remember my brain's not working <sighs> this week has been quite the reading week because i read how to forget by kate Fulgrew. as you know i annotated the living daylights out of this thing and i'm so glad that i did i've actually pre-ordered another copy of this so that i can have one that is pristine and maybe have her sign it in galway because i'm determined to go to galway even if I just have to drive there, go to it and drive back, I will. I will. I will do that. This reading vlog was just pretty much dedicated to that. And I also got halfway through Station Rage of Deep Space Nine by Diane Carey. Nothing really else much to say in that I actually really enjoyed doing these reading vlogs. I hope you guys enjoyed watching them. As I said, great fun. Might do it again. My brain is actually dead. And the fact is, it's 3 p.m. and I haven't ate anything yet. <laughs> I might have to go fix that and fix my room because now I can put all these books away. That's going to be a task. Thanks guys for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.